Power versus heart rate for runners. What, when, how, why, and how to get the most out of the data. Let's go. Running power is a measurement of efficiency, of your effort for every part of your run, and is measured in watts. And it's fast becoming the it metric for successful pacing and racing. It shows you in real time how much force and speed you exert each step by accelerometers found in so many phones and watches these days and so we'll be able to measure your vertical oscillation, cadence, stride length and thus determine your running power. The higher the watts, the more power you're generating each time your foot hits the floor and you can manipulate that by changing your cadence, your stride length and that sort of stuff to make you more of an economical runner. The power data helps you quantify exactly how much energy you're using at different points of your run. So instead of your subjective rate of perceived exertion, you know, that scale of 1 to 10, the power gives you an actual number. No more hiding. It's a really handy stat to have. I mean, cyclists have been banging on about it for a while, so it's about time us runners jumped on board, huh? Running heart rate. But simply, it measures how hard your heart is working for every part of your run and you'll want to target different heart rate zones according to which energy system you want to train more about that in a minute it's measured in beats per minute and it can help you train more holistically rein you in and help you get the most out of each run especially if you're a bit too keen similarities both stats measure your effort both have zones to get the most out of your training um i really shouldn't have started this like a list Differences. Power uses watts and is done in real time. And heart rate is measured in beats per minute and thus it has a delay when you're switching up the efforts. Think of intervals. Ugh. Heart rate based intervals. Ugh. You'll probably also need a chest strap to get the most accurate heart rate training. Heart rate is also affected by many elements like lack of sleep, illness, overtraining, alcohol, caffeine, stress levels, the weather. Whereas power? really isn't. It's perhaps affected by a little wind, but other than that. Throughout a run, you should ideally be able to keep your power around the same level, despite the hill, the fatigue, or despite that little niggly hip injury. Situations to use heart rate. Long-term training. For ultramarathons, I'll usually train for like six to 12 months at about five to seven workouts a week. So I'll use heart rate based runs to make sure I don't overdo it, especially on the slower long run days. Runners who are prone to overtraining, uh, I use heart rate variability stats and heart rate based runs, especially when it's a recovery session or a rest week. Specific energy system training. If you're wanting to improve your cardiovascular endurance, get out of zone three and make sure you stay in zone two. But if you're wanting to increase your VO2 max, use threshold training and heart rate zones are great to push you there right on the edge of zone four, especially because they're a bit longer than interval workouts are. And then there's situations that are better to use the power stats. For example, racing an ultramarathon. When you're feeling in the pits, logic is completely out the window. Um, but you can see your power stats and know that objectively your body is okay. You can keep going and keep pacing yourself, especially when you're in the depths of the trails and your pacing stats perhaps aren't quite right. Your power will see you through. When I'm hill training, I'll use power. Just because you go slower doesn't mean you're working less intensely. And the power will help you understand this. So stick to that number, stick to your effort level, not your pace. Intervals, it is much clearer to understand what effort you are doing right now when you're utilizing power. Also, it's just better in that rest period as well because a heart rate based interval is absolute carnage. Your effort sprint won't hit its target zone in that 30 second time frame, risking you working far too hard for far too long. And when the lag does catch up, you're in your resting bit and it's bleeping saying your heart rate is too high. When you then go out to sprint again, it's like your heart rate is just too low and it's just, the lag is so annoying and it's really hard to control and it's just really hard work. Whereas power knows in the moment what you're currently generating step by step. There's no delay, it's much clearer to understand and much easier to work with. Also, when I'm abroad or in a hotter climate, heart rate always sits higher when the temperatures are higher. So I would opt for a zone specific power metric 
to make sure I'm pushing hard enough. Same goes for windy weather, although some watch models actually counteract the wind effect these days. I mean, technology is so clever. Situations to utilize both. Don't be afraid to use both the heart rate and power data. Combining them can be extremely helpful, especially when monitoring your fitness and efforts post-run. If you can generate more power with every step while at a lower heart rate in a faster pace than your previous workouts, that's a sign of improvement and you need all the data to be able to see that. So situations I combine the two are when I'm training long term and seeing the effects of a particular training plan, let's say over three, six, 12 months or a season, you can be quite surprised. You know, some training plans work better for you and that's, that's a way to figure that out. If, like me, you come from a purely heart rate based way of training and you're developing, then using both will help you understand power and the cadence, stats and the metrics and all that better because you don't need to neglect heart rate just because you've discovered power, use them together and help yourself learn. And tapering. You can get more specific on how much you're taking your foot off the gas right before your race. So you're home after your run and it's time to dive into the data. And the metrics that you're going to want, the sort of in-depth stuff, is going to be found on the apps of the most household name training brands, such as Garmin, Santo, Polar and Coros. What I'd suggest is to go through your past couple of runs, especially if you've had this watch for a while and you just ignored the power data. Go through and find your averages and how power is interacting with all the other metrics. I'm just going to take you through a simplified example of how sticking to power can guide you through to a strong race and can help you with your finish predictions, your PB expectations, stuff like that. So let's say you run at 280 watts. Let's say that's a 10 minute per mile pace on the flat, just for simplicity. Up that hill, to maintain that 280 watts, you will need to slow down. So let's say that's a 12 minute per mile for the hills. On this race that you're running today, it's a 10 mile race and there are five hills, half a mile in length each. So these hills together total 2.5 miles. Roughly, you'll spend 30 minutes going up these hills in the race if you stick to the same wattage and the remaining 7.5 mile route is relatively flat, which means if you maintain a 280 watts power output, that will take you 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes, plus the 30 minutes that's expected for hill running, you can expect to finish this race in one hour, 45 minutes, that 10 miles. That's your prediction and that's something you can work off. So now you can enjoy racing a bit and not just berate yourself because you're dropping pace because it's quite a hilly course. Your effort will remain consistent if you stick to your wattage. Power metrics can help you understand the body, but also help you ease those mental gremlins as well. And it's to me, it's totally worth checking out. So tell me how you get on.